Quebec Civil Code, Article 2, every person has a patrimony. The patrimony may be divided or appropriated to a pur purpose, but only to the extent provided by law. Civil Code of Quebec, Article 302, every legal person has a patrimony, which may, to the extent provided by law, be divided or appropriated to a purpose. It also has the extra patrimonial rights and obligations following, uh, flowing from its nature. So here, Article 302 says every legal person now has a patrimony. Quebec Civil Code, Article 2, it says every person has a patrimony. Now, in Quebec Civil Code, Article 302, it says every legal person has a patrimony. It's my understanding that the patrimony According to the Quebec Civil Code, this patrimony belongs to the man and to the woman, first and foremost. This patrimony was left because we are successors to Her Majesty. And it's our part of the resources that have been extracted from Canada. That's what our patrimony is. And it belongs primarily or first to the man and woman. However, when you inherited your patrimony, you were but a child. You could not have control of it, you could not understand it. That's why they put a registered holder over your patrimony. But they didn't just put a registered holder, they changed some things also, as you'll see. Through the act of registering a birth, the patrimony is removed from man. And then that patrimony is given into a public fund. And it's given back to you in a limited way through your legal person. That's why in Article 302 it says in the Quebec Civil Code, every legal person now has a patrimony. Because they seize the patrimony from your man, they place it in a public fund, and they give you access to it only through your legal person. And it's a limited, very limited access. Being a subject of Her Majesty, your patrimony is seized, taken control of, and it's given back to you in a limited context. Very limited. There's uh, an act out there that shows us how much these uh, bonds that they're floating are worth for a legal person. Uh, at my age, approximately, it's close to $7.8 million. And they're collecting interest and dividends on that uh, quarter annually, which means every three months. This is my understanding. People can have other understandings about this, so I just want to make this clear. When I look at the patrimony, and I examine it and study it and try and figure this out, I only see three ways of potentially getting it back or getting access to it. One is, you claim it back. And I don't just mean by saying, that's my patrimony, give it back. You have to go through corporate law, you have to go through a corporate structure, you have to make some declarations before you can even think about claiming that back. Secondly, a claim in equity against the government. Equity. That would be the easiest situation to do against the government. And then the third would be to cash in your share. To cash in your share, I guess you'd have to approach the, the courts concerning this situation. Because what you're holding indeed is a share. So, if you cash it in, say, that's it, I'm done with it. You guys are crooked, you guys are stealing, I'm trying to fix this situation, now you're being deceptive, I don't want to have nothing to do with it, I'm closing my company, I'm selling off my share, give me back what, what I'm entitled to from my patrimony. Claim it back. If you want to try and claim this back, your patrimony back from them, you got to prove, and I'm talking about doing this as your legal person. You have to prove that you are the owner of the legal person. Some people are trying to, in, in the States, in Canada here, PPSA and UCC in America. I personally believe that your claim of right, notice of understanding and intent, that takes care of your right to be considered not a legal person, but the owner of the legal person. A claim of right is a lawful documentation in law, and it must be respected. Those who don't respect it, there is remedy against that just continue to climb the chain until you reach your remedy. 
But some people will say, in order to be considered the owner of the legal person, you need to file a PPSA form. I don't agree with that. I see an operational law that's apart from that. Anyways, within the legal person, you're going to have to prove that you have executive powers to your legal person. You have to prove it to them. Now, there's a simple way of proving that you have uh, executive powers. is to claim the executive powers. Uh, there's a fellow on internet and YouTube. His name is Dean Clifford. He teaches specifically about corporate law and how to apply the structure of corporate law within your legal person. His name again is Dean Clifford. If you find his videos and listen to it, he'll teach you how to declare yourself to have executive powers. It's just what an affidavit sent up to them, but you should still watch it. Once you send them all the proper documentation and you've prepared everything and they refuse to allow you to have access to your patrimony, then you can go to federal court and lay a claim against them. Because step by step, you've said to them and you've, and you've declared your rights in the law and they're refusing. So go to federal court and lay a claim against them. Equity, fairness, impartiality, even-handed dealings. The body of principles constituting what is fair and right. Natural law. Listen to this, this is important. The recourse to principles of justice to correct or supplement the law as applied to a particular circumstance. So claim equity. Equity. Claim what is going on with your patrimony. What they've done to your patrimony to you to your patrimony is not equity. That's not fairness. That's not impartiality. So when you send a claim to them in equity, you're stating, hang on a second here, you're putting the brakes on everything and saying what how you're dispersing my patrimony within the legal person is not proper and it doesn't equate to equality or equity, fairness. So when you claim under equity, you claim under equity, what you're claiming is a recourse in justice. It's an operation of law that you're allowed to invoke. It's, it's operation is to correct or supplement. Now look at those words, correct or supplement the law, okay? As applied to a particular circumstance. So, your patrimony is seized. You're not receiving anything worth any value from your patrimony. Therefore, you are invoking equity. You're invoking a recourse in justice to correct or supplement what's going on in law as applied to your patrimony, your particular circumstance. So when you lay your claim in equity, what can the government say? When they're taking millions of dollars and giving you back maybe $10,000, $20,000, if you're using their systems or not? Oui, je me souviens. The government spends $322 a day from the public fund, from where the patrimony is, okay? 322 days, $322 a day for one prisoner in a federal prison. That's what the government is spending upon them. They spend that money to correct their behavior, to meet their human rights, to give them fo food, clothing, shelter, even entertainment, hot water, electricity, access to a public phone. I could keep on going and going. But they take $322 a day from the public fund per prisoner to meet their needs. If you wonder how to lay a claim in equity, I guess it would be a good start, no? Statscan.ca It's the government of Canada. It usually costs more to house federal inmates than inmates in provincial and territorial systems. On average, in 2008-2009, institutional expenditures amounted to almost $323 per day per federal inmate. So, $323 per day per federal inmate. Now it says, compared to about $162 per day per provincial or territorial inmate. So, $323 per day and $162 per day. And that was two years ago. I'm sure the amounts are quite higher now. I guess, once you understand corporate law, option number three, you can cash in your share. Because you can contact the proper branch of government and I'm not going to declare what 
what I think the proper branch of government is right now. Once you understand this, you go and study that, it should be pretty easy where that's going to fall into. But cash out. Say, listen, I'm not a Canadian citizen, not part of this structure anymore. As such, my patrimony, as being a successor, belongs to me. Here you go. End of story. So I believe there are ways to get access to your patrimony, and I shared a few with you. And I don't believe this is a process that's going to happen overnight. It's a process of learning, understanding, and then making proper demands in equity. A lot of people in Canada don't believe that there's such a thing as a patrimony, don't believe that they are a successor to Her Majesty, and don't understand what's going on with the laws. So, and they're suffering the consequences of that. As I've learned in my own walk through this, is that the government is not under any accountability to you to reveal anything. I personally believe that your claim in equity is your best, don't want to say chance, but is your best option, your best operation of law to acquire proper allocation of your patrimony to you. It takes a lot of understanding to operate a claim in equity. So get corporate understanding and then also get understanding of how the government has done what they've done to you. Then you can make your claim in equity.